Hello, and welcome to this special flashback episode of Miss Click's D&D Risen. I've got most of my crew here with me, uh, starting with Britt. Hello, it's me, Britt Weisman, aka Cheerhex on Twitch and other places on the internet. And I'm Lalu Irish in this game. I'm a circle of the moon druid slash tiefling, tiefling druid. And I, uh, let's play, let's play, let's have some fun. Steven. <laughs> Hello, I'm um, Steven Lumpkin. I play Jorm Eldwine, a human cleric of Tear. And uh, I think <clears throat> as we join our uh, fearless heroes, uh, Jorm has already suffered some extreme wounds at the hands of the terrors that we've faced, but I'll let Nadja talk about that very shortly. In the meantime, Let's hear from Kelly. Thank you, Stephen. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm excited to uh, play Yori Diggle, who is a uh, halfling thief. I'm excited to get into this because we've already done a flashback episode, actually, as our starting episode at the Stream of Annihilation. I'm excited to like maybe touch back on that. So, Naja, how does this all get started? And I am Naja Dikur, aka Trist Ray, and I'm going to be your DM. And I'm gonna tell you why Jorm's all fucked up after this intro. <laughs> All right, so uh, when we join our uh, intrepid companions, they are on a quest for their old friend, the wizard Stanley, who, after being rescued from the troll prison where they first met him, has gone about reestablishing himself as a powerful wizard in the local town. Uh, and it has been giving them a an assortment of fetch quests because he needs his supplies and you guys seem capable and also will do things for money. It's good. It's a good <laughs> relationship. It's true. Uh, he has sent you to the ooze cleft, a dreaded cave full of ooze, but also magical crystals. And he sent you with one crystal that will resonate with the type that he needs you to bring more of back to him. So you've been uh, delving through the ooze cleft, uh, and Jorm Jorm encountered encountered a great peril. Uh, and actually, I want to turn it over to you, Stephen. What what harm have you encountered? So I think uh, when we first found like the the first patch of crystals that resonated with this crystal we were handed. Um, Maybe there's something about these magical crystals where if they grow and there's like enough of them in one area, they can sort of take on some sort of arcane intellect. And so they had formed themselves into an intelligent creature wrapped up in an ooze. And we fought a fierce battle with this ooze crystal creature. Uh, and Jorm actually went down twice but his companions managed to pick him up each time. So now he's sitting at nine hit points. He's, he's taken some serious damage. He's got a few spells left in his bag, but he's trying to reserve them for his dear friends, uh, Lalu and Yori, because we, we don't have a critical team member with us to, uh, to help defend the team. And, and Jorm considers it his responsibility to bring everyone back alive. Indeed, as you may have noticed, Langus isn't with the crew for this quest. Uh, and I will, I will talk to Neil later about why mm. Langus missed this one, um, but he's not here. So with diminished capacity, uh, you guys fought this, this crystal-empowered ooze, um, but you prevailed. 
And I think when we join you in the middle of the ooze, ooze cleft, I keep wanting to say ooze quest, which is ooze also quest. true. Um, I think you guys are trying to deal with uh, Jorm, who's been grievously injured, but a, there's like a loud explosion and a rain of crystals come out of a nearby passage and you hear the chittering of little goblin voices. I will Gods, not again. Over to this map. Oh, wow. Ooh. So, yeah, you guys are, are dealing with Jorm and there's like an explosion. A little, little bomb goes off and these crystals come flying out of this passage, followed by some goblins that are stuffing their pockets with all of them. One of them <laughs> seems to be in charge and is directing the other three to pick things up and put them in their little like goblin loincloth fanny packs. It's canon now. <laughs> goblin loincloth fanny packs. Awesome. Yes. yes. No goblin can be seen without one. It's, it's all the rage. Um, and they haven't noticed you yet. And they're just... <laughs> yeah. I think Jorm is in like a real foul temper. He woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. He hasn't had a good quest so far. He likes his quests to go smooth. Why can't it ever go smooth? Mm. And so he sees this leader goblin over there uh, and he shouts out, tear by thy hand, smite my enemies. And he fires off uh, a, a, a guiding uh, a guiding bolt. At the boss? Yeah, at the leader. This is this guy with the special mask, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. So let's see. He's casting a level one spell. I got a 16. That is a miss. A miss? Oh, man. Wow. It's a miss. So I guess uh -oh. maybe it like splashes off of this thing's armor or something, right? That's got Yeah, it. yeah. He's, he's got a real nice chain shirt on. Yeah, I, but Jorn probably sees that and he mutters under his breath. He says, Tear, why have you forsaken me? And then he pulls out his uh, his mace and his shield and he roars. Wah! And the goblins all yeah, kind of right. jump and look over their little shoulders and the boss points at you and he says, Cool. And and sends his his compatriots to deal with this, this new threat that they weren't expecting uh, when they went to go crystal harvesting <laughs> this day. Uh, so let's let's just jump into some initiative. That's that's what's up. How do these goblins think we feel? We're just trying to harvest some crystals, and then these goblins jump out of nowhere. But really, the real question is, how does the ooze feel? Mm -hmm. It was chilling in its living room, and then just hella people <laughs> come and try to take its stuff. Is there many aggrieved parties in this room right now? Okay, so yeah, the Damn. goblins are so ready. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> thanks for the yell, Jorm. <laughs> These foul beasts have to be cleansed from this world. <laughs> so uh, we are not using a grid today, uh, but I want you all to know that if you click and hold on your token and then hit spacebar, you can you can see how far you're moving. Uh, without the necessity of a grid. So this guy is going to, they can't get, oh, their Jorm is right here, of course. Jorm went charging in. Yeah, so this guy is going to go that way. And this guy is going to gonna step right here. Um, and these goblins are going to try and deal with this problem. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. They just they're they're little puny goblins. Except for that one. Apparently. God. <laughs> Apparently. Uh. Don't blame me. Jesus. <laughs> I didn't do it. You all saw Roll 20. God damn. All right. Jorm takes a scimitar through the stomach and he falls to his knees, uh, blacking out. Shit. Wait, no, zero. Minus ten. Zero. And the goblins kind of like all freeze and look at each other and they go. <laughs> uh, the goblin boss is going to retreat a bit 
down this corridor. Uh, Jorm. <laughs> I guess I'll make a death saving throw. What? <laughs> I mean, th- what? You Can set I- the you set your starting position. It was not oh. me. <laughs> Can I cast <laughs> like a, a, a nope? I can't. Oh dear. Yeah, the great Jorm Meltwine. <laughs> <laughs> This is a flashback. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> um. Jorm dies. Just like having That's a little party. That's the show, party. everyone. He <laughs> <laughs> just got him owned by goblins. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is horrible. This is what like. We don't have ten meal. minutes into this game. <laughs> so, Lalu, you got a real problem. Okay. <laughs> you got a bunch of goblins uh, doing a little victory dance around your friend's body, and we which could be could be salvaged. Yeah. Okay. And resurrected if you can get it out of this cave. I have to get the. I have to get his body out of the cave first. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like the best thing to do is to eliminate the goblins first of all. Uh, his body will be there when they're done. So uh, I am going to become a tiger. Um, so I transform into a tiger <laughs> and, uh, and then I run toward, uh, the, let's see, let's just, let's just hit the closest one. Let's just see what happens there. Um, so I click it and hold it down to see what the distance is. I just want to see if that's at least 20 feet. I can use my ruler. 16. You're muted, Naja. Click and pick up your token while yep. you're holding it. Tap spacebar and then you can drag. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, it's not quite 20 feet. Doesn't really count, does it? I mean, if I'm inside, it's inside mine and barely inside his. Can I attack? I will count it as 20 feet. Yes. Okay. So uh, I will pounce because I can pounce as long as I'm 20 feet away. So I turn into a tiger. And then I get down and do the butt wiggle thing that tigers do. And then I pounce on the goblin. Uh, Yeah. And then hit it with a claw attack on the same turn. And target must succeed on DC 13 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. If it's knocked prone, then I can make a bite attack uh, as a bonus action. Okay. So. So first I need the, the roll to hit with the claw. Yep. D20 plus five. Boom. Uh, that on a goblin. Is that oh, regular ass goblin is a miss. No! No, oh, we're all gonna die. <laughs> I just pounce at the goblin and <laughs> run into the dirt. Goblin <laughs> TPK. I feel like the goblin was like scared and he like threw up his hands and his hand got attached to something inside of his tiny, his tiny fanny pack. And it was like a string and the string like flew away. And I was a tiger and a cat. I was like string. And I missed Mm, mm. my pounce because I got distracted by the string. Yeah. Could you move your token for where (laughs) you are now? I can. Um, So you like land among all of the goblins and they're like, eh, (laughs) eh, Um, Should I just put it like here on top of it? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And so they're just kind of, they're not pleased (laughs) by this development, but it's not their turn. Yuri, what would you like to do? I would like to use my bow and to shoot from afar. Shoot the one, I guess, that Lalu's on. Okay. She's not like on top of it, right? She's just kind of near it. She missed. Okay. Ooh. No rolls. Okay, that's where all the luck with went. We figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, your your arrow <laughs> just like sinks into the eye hole of this guy's mask and he is so incredibly dead. Nice. <sighs> all right, one down. And I get a sneak attack, right? Uh you used it. Okay. Never mind. You used it. Uh, but you do get a bonus action. Oh, then yeah. The bo- oh, the bonus action. Uh I'm kind of okay where I am. I don't really need to hide or disengage or anything. Okay. So yeah, you just competently uh snipe down one of the goblins the other two and is is that all for you 
Yes. The other two looked at their friend laying on the ground. They look at each other. And then from the hallway, you hear some angry shouting and goblin. And they're like, <sighs> and they pick up their scimitars and charge at the tiger. No! Ah! Sorry, Lalu. <laughs> so one attack on Lalu. 12. Is that uh, hit? Nope. My AC is 14. Well, I guess as a tiger, it's different. Let me double Wait, check, but I'm sure it's fine. Uh, my AC is 12. 12. No! So they well, both hit. Uh, for seven each. Yikes. That's some roll, roll garbage. Okay. <laughs> they're dead. I mean, really, they're just they're how much little was it? Four- goblins. You said fourteen <laughs> total. Okay. It's just they're just these. Little, I was like little little. This is this is a monsters. slow ball. This is fine. It's not fine. Um, <laughs> the it's goblin, not fine. The goblin boss raises his scimitar and says. Wah, nip, 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 nip. Uh, but does not risk himself. Uh, Jorm is knocked the fuck out. Lalu. Uh, yeah, I'm going to attack again. Uh, this one. Is this the one that hit me? This one above Jorm's token? Oh, yeah. Actually, they're uh, both yeah. like right here. You got to get Because they both attacked you. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to attack this one right here. So, hopefully... I'll have a better. Put you in front because you're important. Uh, bizarrely, that is uh, a miss. I decay. I decay. Um, they picked up the string, didn't they? I'm just distracted, like rolling around. It's there's like a loose string, like on one of their like wristbands, and as he's like doing his little goblin dance, it's just all over the place. I'm hurt, but then I also want to play. You're highly distracted. Uh, no. Yori, gonna shoot down the next one. Like she takes a deep breath, all calmly, while all this chaos is going on, pulls back her bow again, and uh, lets it rip, Beyblade style. Mm-hmm. And you hit. Yes. And you, you kill another one. <laughs> Yuri's just like pulling complete Legolas shit. Yeah, yeah. Right. One arrow through the eyeball. Second I should yeah, I should have just eyeball. used my flaming. Lalu's just on her back, like batting at this loose string. Yuri is just <laughs> taking care of everything. Um, so the last goblin is he he looks over his shoulder and you hear from the hallway. <laughs> and he looks and he's like, mm. <laughs> and he's gonna he's gonna try and run. Um so he just He's like done. he darts past you, uh, Lalu, and you're welcome to take an attack of opportunity. Uh, I would like. love to do that. Is that the same roll? Yeah. Uh, D20 plus five. Yep. I just wanted to make get him. Sure. Nope. Why? He just runs by, and I'm like, He's swipe at like him. later. Betting right at the string. Yeah. Um, and then the goblin boss is going to come out from behind his, where he's hiding and yell at this guy's back. And the, the fleeing goblin just slows over his shoulder and says, eh! and scurries away. Uh, Jorm is out. Lalu. Uh, I'm going to just attack this one over here then. Actually, how far away? Let's see. 27 feet and as a tiger i pretty sure i can go yeah i have 40 feet oh i'm gonna mm-hmm. pounce on this guy i've decided okay. to chase the toy so ideally i roll anything that's useful today at all yeah finally do it yeah yeah, this this goblin runs away with your string waving from his <laughs> arm. Come back! Uh, and you you do your butt wiggle and jump on him. Uh, roll me a one d eight plus three. Oh yeah, you murder this thing. <laughs> Tear him apart. Finally, I just pick him up and I'm like, Ugh, just playing with him. 
<laughs> when I shake him, his fanny pack is open and all of these like cat toys. Yeah, all these out. like crystals. These come little flying yeah, out. crystals and strings and stuff. I'm and the goblin like, blo- yes! boss stops shouting and it's like <laughs> looks over his shoulder. <laughs> Yuri. You know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna she takes another deep breath, pulls back her bow. Okay, so this time you don't have um any of your friends within five feet. Oh. And you are not attacking from stealth. <gasps> okay. So this is just a regular bow shot. Could yeah, she fine. use her bonus action to hide first and then attack? Hmm. I think bonus actions have to be afterwards. Like after your know. initial Do action. I don't actually know. I'll allow it. It's fine. Ooh. You know what? Instead, I'll I'm going to throw a dagger. No, no. I'm still going to do my short bow. So first, give me a stealth. Okay. If you're if you're hiding. Uh yeah, I'm close enough to this rock that I could probably like try and hide behind. Mm-hmm. Eh. An eleven. Okay. Um, that's not what I need. Um, let me see. This guy. Oh, bonus actions can be taken before. Okay. Yes, and this guy has a passive perception of nine and is very distracted nice. with all his underlings getting murdered <laughs> um, by tigers and whatnot. So, uh, give me that stealthy bow shot. All right, let's make it a hat trick. Oh. Uh, stealth gives you advantage, correct? Yeah. So, it does. you do hit. Ooh. Um, and you get your sneak attack. So, you hit for 14. So, your arrow just sinks into his arm and he says, <laughs> and The goblins are all dead. Uh, goblin boss is like, uh, I don't think so. And he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna try and skedaddle back through the, the crystal hall that they just blew up. And he's like grabbing some, some crystals and like trying to shove them in his little fanny pack as he runs. Uh, Joram Lalu. So it's around a corner, but straight through is less than 40 feet. So can I go after him? Um, well, if I go straight, it's 36, 36. And then, Ugh, oh no. Slightly out of your no. range. Okay. Uh, I, I look over, I look over at Yori, uh, kind of like, motion whether I should like should I go after him or should I just stay but I don't say anything because I'm still a tiger so I just kind of like start to step and like look at her <laughs> I point I go fetch okay. you're a tiger <laughs> you can run fast uh, so I run as far as I could go um so I'll go up here and I guess I just have to like I, I stop when I get here and kind of like hide behind this thing so I can um, a sneak attack him on my next turn when I can actually reach him because I don't think I can do anything besides move at this point for my turn. Okay, give me a stealth roll. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're nice. super stealthy. Let's sneak over there. He's actually distracted trying to put as many crystals into his fanny pack as he possibly can. Nice. There are uh, a lot of crystals here. There are quite a few. Uh, Yuri. Yes. I like to go check on Jorm if I can and see if he has a potion on him because I don't think I have potions on my myself. So I, I, I don't, I'm not a magic user. I don't really know what to do, but I start shaking him. Wake, <laughs> up. <laughs> Wake up. And I'm guessing yeah. nothing happens now. He's, I go, Alu, what do I do? How do I dead. fix him? How do I, how do I stop this deadness? So <laughs> Yuri agonizes over her down friend. Um, Goblin boss uh, looks up at Yuri shouting. He's like, Meh. and he's going to try and, and he stops picking up crystals and it like <laughs> runs to this corner and then looks at the crystals looks at the way out <laughs> makes a wisdom save <laughs> and decides to pick up a fuck ton more crystals so he's now <laughs> just like he's putting them like in his cheeks and like holding them and like trying to like 
get his arms around as many crystals as he can and he's like staggering behind this mound of crystals that he can't see over uh so he doesn't get too far uh lalu uh yeah i just attack him i see my opportunity and i pounce him okay give me that claw uh with advantage okay and that's 1d8 plus three right yes A seven. Yeah, he's dead. Yes. Ah. There's all these ah. crystals tumble out all over the ground. And then I just lay down and roll on the crystals for a minute. And then turn it's back nice. into myself. It's pleasantly scratchy. When I realize that I should probably save my friend. So I turn back into myself. And so. run over to Yori. And say, yeah, Did you Yuri. save him? No, I don't know what to do. Do we take him to Stanley? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think we have to, we got to take him to Stanley. I can't carry him. I can try. What, what form do you have? Like, I, I guess a tiger. Yeah, I guess I can reform into a tiger or like a bear and we can just like put him on my back. Are you just going to like bite my neck and carry me like by <laughs> my broken bit neck? Like what? I like can a little pick cub. you up by your collar and just drag you along. Yeah, so. Uh, Jorm will remember this. Let's go back into tiger mode because that's what I'm comfortable as already. So I'm going to go back into tiger mode. And before I do, I'm going to say, Yori, you lead the way and I'm just going to pull him, drag him along. I'm so, gonna I'm gonna grab some crystals first because I bet Stanley's gonna be mad and probably not res Jorm if we don't bring back some crystals. Maybe so. we should just take the fanny packs too. Just strap the fanny packs <laughs> to to Jorm. All right. Yeah put the attach all the fanny packs onto Jorm. So I'll, sure help, I'll help with that and stuff the crystals in there <laughs> and attach them to Jorm before I turn back into a tiger to to drag him out. Okay. So you guys pass some some time dragging your plate mail clad friend and uh, a fortune in crystal out of the mouth of the ooze cleft um, through puddles of ooze as you slay, slew on the way in. Um, Jorm, in your as you wait in limbo, you have like any special like spiritual experiences? Oh man, well I guess tear is like the god of justice, right? <clears throat> so maybe there's some sort of like, uh, I, I guess in, in Jorm's like heart of hearts, what he hopes happens after death is he's like led through the halls of records of Jorm's like actions through life. And then like, you know, maybe there's like scribes on each side of the hall. And every time, you know, this uh, archon of Tyr uh, recounts one of Jorm's deeds, it gets written on a sheet of paper by a scribe either on the left or on the right. <clears throat> and then at the very end of this long hall, there's a huge set of uh, scales. And as, the, as you walk through the hall, all of these papers are stacked up on each other and passed scribe, describe, describe. And so by the end of the hall, you've accrued like huge stacks of paper on each side of your, your good deeds and your bad deeds or just and unjust. And so they're placed on the scales and weighed one against the other to see whether or not you enter into Elysium or are cast into the burning hells. Mm. So that's the process that Jorm is probably going through right now. Is it looking good for you? <sighs> I think Jorm <laughs> probably had a really rough early stage of his life. So probably up until he was like, 18 to 20 he was probably kind of a shit like there's there's a reason that he became a warrior instead of like you know a, a, a abandoning the idea of violence at all like this is what he was good at so he's hmm. probably at the point right now where like there's a mountain on the left and like <laughs> just a, a, a very small stack on the right it's like one time jorm shared his bread with a, a you know another street urchin you know after he beat the shit out of a stallkeeper to steal it for them. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. You already liked, she liked Jorm for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> We're all working together. Starting to figure out why Jorm has a manacle guy, just like a person that he knows that just does manacles. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so you guys you guys are dragging him out of this cave and you manage to get get him back to town uh, where the wizard Stanley greets you uh, at his uh, up and coming. It's, it's an up and comer townhome. Uh, he's working on it with your assistance. And he looks at you and he says, well, well, what? A, this was a very simple task that I gave you. What is this? I Dad? just drag, I drag Jorm up in front of him and just drop him and then <gasps> sit in front of Stanley. This is not a crystal. This is in fact that rather pumped up Papa's idiot that you all travel with. And he appears to be dead. I don't, Yori. Stanley, can you fix him? Can you can you do your wizardry magic stuff and bring him back to life, please? Uh, alas, I probably could. I should, if I want my crystal, unless you brought me my crystal. You know, I feel like I, I remember getting crystals, but I don't know if I have them. Maybe Jorm. I think Jorm knows where they are. Are but they like he's tumbling dead. out of the fanny packs that are strapped to Jorm? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're obviously like there's like these bulging fanny packs full Pouches. of rocks at the very least. Yeah. Well, he's a rock collector. It's very he's, heavy. Stanley just kind of arches an eyebrow and he says, "Well, you've done me a good turn already. I suppose I will pick your friend up. It'll be part of the legend of the wizard Stanley." Really should work on that. I. It's difficult. Just, just bring him inside. I'll, I'll, I'll resurrect him with my not inconsiderable power. Hmm. Uh, I just pick him up and follow the <laughs> wizard inside. So we cut to the scene of of Jorm laid out on probably Stanley's din- dining room table. Yeah, I guess when I get inside, I just hold him in my mouth and I'm looking around trying to figure out where I'm supposed to put him. Put him, put him on my table there. Put I him on the table. Hop up on the table and drag him up. <laughs> Let him go. All right, all right. Let's see here. I just need to find the spell in my book. Uh, hmm. Give me one moment. And he pulls out the same book that you all located for him in the, the troll prison and starts to flip through it. Resurrection, resurrection. This this is a spell I learned. Well, it's a very long and interesting story. Typically, uh, a wizard of my trade does not have this skill, but I am an extraordinary wizard. And I have learned many things in my day. Yes, I have. Ah, yes, here it is. Hmm. 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 Can you can you do it? Yes, I just I need a a diamond, which I have. It's planning to use for something slightly more important to me personally. But I suppose if you do in fact get me my crystal, this is a fair trade. Hmm. And he, like, gives you a long look. <laughs> she opens up all the fanny packs. They come rolling out. We got, ah, we got your crystals. Ah, crystals, crystals. Yes, of course. And and where is the uh, scrying crystal that I gave you to test and see if they're the correct ones? Jorm totally dropped that. He just looks at you. I just push a random crystal at him with my paw. <laughs> Uh, Hoping that he just won't notice. Uh, <laughs> idiots. <laughs> well, first, let me test these crystals. And he picks them up and, like, picks up one and he goes over to his little side table where his alchemy kit is. And he punches over it and he says, hmm, if I just treat it with this tincture here and hold it up to this prism. And... My dear, this is a clear rock. This is... Fine, fine. Here's what we'll do. I will resurrect your friend. You will go back to the cave, find the scrying crystal, find the correct crystals that I am looking for. And we'll be square, all of us. No more, no more quests, no more payments, 
No more interaction, no more resurrections. And for your sake, I hope no more deaths. Is that clear? No more payments? You don't, okay, yeah, okay. This is calamity. But I will save you this one time and you will get the thing that I wanted and then we shall never speak again. God's grant me this one boon. Are we understood? Fine, fine. I can't believe I'm spending a diamond on you idiots. The wizard Stanley does not work like this. He gets his book and he looks down at it and starts muttering to himself. Okay, well, I'll just put this here on his chest like so. Then I need to... I suppose I do need to invoke the gods. I'm troublesome. And he just continues to mutter to himself. You guys do anything while you, while you wait? Uh, I mean, I feel like I'm just like watching him to make sure he continues to help. Maybe I'm just like batting at Jorm's body a little bit to see if I can wake him up or something. Uh, but yeah, just hanging out, trying to make sure Jorm's protected and that Stanley isn't trying to like screw us over or something because I don't really trust him. And he like definitely snaps at you like, stop moving the body. This is a very delicate process. Go play in the corner. <laughs> Just growl at him. <laughs> uh, Jorm approaches down. the end of the hallway <clears throat> where uh, the, the stacks of paper on each side are far too close to call just visually. And there's probably like, you know, four or five like trumpet archons at the end of the hall. And they're like, there's some pomp and circumstance associated with you know, the placement of the piles of paper onto the scales. That's what Jorm is doing. Mm. Yori, what are you doing? Uh, well, since you, uh, since these are not the crystals you wanted, can I take them? I mean, are they <laughs> worth anything? You don't need them, right? I'm studying. Have a with me later. Uh, I, and she starts filling up the fanny packs again with the crystals. <laughs> Off of Jorm's dead body. <laughs> so Stanley putters around Jorm's body and and inscribes some runes on the table and casts some some prayers up to the gods and, and as best he can. He's not particularly a religious man, but it's very difficult to grant resurrection without the gods' interference. He says, ah, To whom it may concern... I, the wizard Stanley, do humbly request that you bring this man Joram Eldwine back from the gates of death such that he may complete a task that I was promised. It is a matter of um justice. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Uh, this death would constitute a breach of contract and therefore I claim first right of refusal on this man's soul. Yes, of course, of course. There's like one new sheet of paper that's being brought up the left side. <laughs> Breach of contract. <laughs> and you can, you hear, you start hearing this in the afterlife, you hear this like voice of Stanley yeah. Um, reminding you that you have accepted a very important task and there's all this sworn solemn your name pomp on. and circumstance and mm-hmm. like the voice of like a men's choir, like oh ooh, <laughs> and then I am a right of first refusal of the soul. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and uh Lalu and Yori, you see like this great light emanating from the diamond and it sinks into Jorn's chest. And he takes like a deep, like, cut back from the dead breath. You know, the one. (gasps) Just so. (sighs) He's back from the dead. I can tell from that breath. Yeah, I I draw my mace and I roll off the table. I said, what the god was? (laughs) And Stanley just looks at you and he says, I hope you are properly grateful, sir. 
Oh, what, what in the nine hells just happened? You were quite dead. I was about to find out if I'd go to Elysium or not. You fool! And I launched myself at Stanley. <gasps> <gasps> and like the, he like runs around the table and was like trying to keep the table between the two of you. Yori yeah, tries I'm, to stop him. I'm raving. I'm like, do you know how many sheets of paper I had to look at? And there was thievery, larceny, arson. You know, I just start listing. <laughs> My good man, I am not concerned with your past crimes, merely your present duty. Yeah, and I, I turn think... back into myself while this is happening, and I'm like, Jorm, cut it out! Yeah, <laughs> you're that, dead. That stops Jorm up, like a oh, present duty. Uh, very well, but uh, then I look over the table. Did did not my companions provide you with the crystals you required? These are not the proper crystals. I gave you a tool to help you identify which crystals I was looking for. I was and very specific. It. These are the ones we found. Wait, where did these crystals all come from? You lost the one that we needed and you got killed by goblins. Don't blame him. He just died. I'm just telling him what happened. He know, did Lalo. lose the crystal we need, though. I got killed by goblins. Yeah, it's kind and of embarrassing. Dignified. That's terrible. So we did get their fanny packs, though. So I do. I do not want like fanny, fanny packs. packs. Are you sure you don't want these crystals? We no. can just be out of your hair, never have to deal with each other. No, okay. These are useless to me. I gave you very specific instructions how to find the proper crystals that you ignored, lost the tool for, and then somehow managed to die to goblins. Just give yeah. us another one. Yeah, one more. Hmm. One more. Just give us one more. We already killed the goblins. We know not to attack them now at close range. It seemed reasonable at the time. <laughs> sure. Listen, <sighs> Stanley, come on. Give us the crystal we need, or else we can't help you. So if you don't want to give wait, it to wait. us, we could go. Where? Where did I die? In the cave. Near the, the, the crystal ooze thing. Yeah, right next to it. You literally ran into a group of goblins, and then they murdered you. Uh, I don't. I, I don't remember that part. I'm not certain it entirely happened, but I do remember. Dropping the crystal when I drew my shield. I think I remember where it landed. Really? Yes. We're just Everything dead after that you... is fuzzy. Okay. I don't remember goblins. It was probably some sort of rock troll. But anyway. Let's go. Let's, let's go back to the cave. Please do. Yeah. I would like the scrying crystal back and also the crystals I requested. Well, we'll and, do uh, our best. How many of the <laughs> crystals did you say you needed? Hmm. Well, now, now that you have consumed one of my precious diamonds, I'm going to need twice as much as I did before to complete this spell that I was trying to cast in the first place. Don't huff at me, you red thing, you. Oh, my <sighs> mm. oh, back in my day, we didn't put up with this. No wonder you died to goblins when you traveled to monsters yourselves. I didn't die. I turned into a tiger and mauled them to death. I say, I don't think I like your tone. <laughs> I don't think I like your work ethic. Get me my crystals. Mmm. Friends. Guys, you ever wish that we left Stanley back in the cave? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Let's depart and we can get this gentleman his crystals and be done with him. Mm. But do you hear that? This is the last job we'll ever do for you. We're not I have to you already our... said that, my good man. Uh, oh. Yeah, he doesn't like us. He doesn't want us to come back. Oh. I want you to come back with my crystals. But oh. not to hang out. No. I think our story will come to an end hopefully promptly, for all our sakes. Yes, well. Agreed. 
Mm. Thanks for the things that you did. I just walk outside. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I just go outside, waiting, waiting for my my friends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I follow Lalu. Yes, I follow. So you guys travel back to the cave, the the dreaded ooze cleft. Yeah, <laughs> to look for this <laughs> crystal. One crystal among many. <laughs> so we 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 stand outside of the cave, and I I turn to my companions here and I say, "Where um, where did we find that man anyway?" We found him in the other cave. How far Where? away is that? I don't know. Do we, I mean, do we have a, Naja, do we have a general idea of like where that cave was, how long ago <laughs> yeah. we found Stanley? I mean, if you want to go back there, you can. I don't have a map for it, but I didn't in the first place. We could go back. No. Listen, what? this Dor- wizard has been nothing but trouble. It seems to me that According to the scales of balance of the universe, oh, the right oh, of to this. bring him back to the cave. Why? Jorm, let's just, let's get this crystal and let's go. I heard that there's this island that has a lot of like gold and, and, and uh, like all these artifacts. Let's just get done with this guy and we can go do the next thing. Jorm, do you just, remember how many spiders were in that cave? Uh, you hated that cave. <laughs> Uh, right. Well, uh, mm, uh, after you. <laughs> That's what I thought. And I walk into the cave. Yeah. Okay. Jorm, Jorm <laughs> has his shield on now and a, and his mace, and he's holding them out in front of him in a very defensive sort of position. As one should. Mm-hmm. Um, so so we return to the site of the, the death of Jan Arcane Empowered Ochre Jelly. Yeah, and I, several goblins. <laughs> I look down at the floor and I point and I say, "So there, there's the the Chris. Wait, where's the where's the scrying crystal? You had it. Where is it? Uh, I perform a quick search. As area. he's doing that, I'm walking around and I'm pointing. And I'm saying, "This is where you started. This is where <laughs> you ran to, and this is where the goblins murdered you." Jorm is not rolling hot today. Hmm. Yeah, your your head's still ringing with the choral music of the afterlife a little bit. Yep. Can I roll to try and find it? Yes. Okay. One of you could help the other Let's and try. grant advantage. Yeah, do you want to give me advantage, Yori? Let's do it. Or, okay. Thank God. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been bad. Wow. <laughs> So, so between the two of you, you <laughs> managed to locate where this scrying crystal. I fell feel like dirt. I accidentally trip Yori, and she falls onto <laughs> where, like, the crystals in front of her face when she falls. It's like stuck in my face when I sit back up. Just yeah, look, I think Storm's <laughs> looking at a wall far away. I thought I dropped it over here or something. I think we found it. I think this looks different. And, and it tastes different, and I know that because I fell into it, and I uh, bit, and my tooth got chipped. So that's great. Thanks. Thanks, Lalu. Just death and, t- and tooth being chipped. This is a great day. You found it, so you're welcome. Right. So, uh, Yori, you found it, so maybe you should keep it. You know, um, yeah, I am good at keeping things. Feel safe yeah. with you. Okay. So... She goes on with the scrying crystal. I guess she, like she just holds it. That's her assumption. Is that how magic works? Yeah, she just like <laughs> mm, yeah, she's kind of making like a, a humming sound. Mm. <laughs> and as as you hum to yourself, you do you do feel a an urge to go this way. Mm. This way, and she walks forward. So yeah, you're traveling through this cave and like as you get closer, the scrying crystal uh, gets warmer in your hand. Um, And you notice it's not, it's on the other side of that wall. Okay. So she continues, she's just going to follow it until she like, you know, gets, it gets really hot. Is it getting Mm -hmm. like, how hot is it getting? Not painfully. 
Okay. Um, it's like hand warmer hot. Mm, like nice. those little. Because I could just hats. give it to Lalu if it was like burning me or anything. Also, that is true. Yeah. And as you as you get closer to um, this little cul-de-sac part of the cave, uh, you notice two things. One, you notice uh, more ooze all over the fuchsia-esque -esque, uh, crystals in the far wall. And you also hear whispering. Oh, okay. What kind of whispering? Nonsensical yes. gibberish. No! One might say. Oh, no! I hate no! these! <laughs> this is what or happens when you play prophecy with Naja for a year. She's like, <laughs> I know. Oh, man. Oh. I know what's coming. <laughs> mm. You know what? I think Yori's kind of oblivious. And she thinks it's just some, like, skittering bats or whatever. She continues forward. She's like, I want to be done with this. I want to be done with Stanley and I need more gold because he doesn't pay us anything. So she goes into the, into the cave. All right. So she wants this over with. First thing I need is for you to, let's see. Do, 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 go to the thing. Uh, hold please. As I make sure I'm not. Uh, yeah. Uh, could you make a DC 10 wisdom saving throw, Yori? I uh, save. Fine. 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 <laughs> so you hear you hear this like nonsensical like whispering get louder and it starts to echo in this small room. Mm -hmm. And the the ooze like forms up and it, all of these like little openings in it, like little mouths. Ew saying gibberish and a gibbering mouther emerges out of the floor. Lalu, this seems like something you you should handle. And oh, I heard about these from Zisa. What did Zisa tell you about them? I'm curious. <laughs> she, she said they were giant gross blobby monsters and she hated them. To sounds, accurate, sounds appropriate. She also summation. told me not to touch them. Don't it, touch them. I'll touch them oh. with my mace. And so like, they're they're far away though. Still, that's about it's just one. About twenty feet away. Just one. Mm. This is just one lone gibbering mouther, and it starts blop. It starts blooping towards you. <laughs> yeah, they make bloops when they move. Yeah, nice. bloop, bloop, blooping and gibbering and nonsense that almost maddens you, Yuri. But you manage to like keep okay. keep it together. Yeah. Um. Let's do some initiative. Oh yeah. And because this thing wants to fight you for sure. Oops. It's not very fast. There we go. <clears throat> Ooh, okay, right. good. The ooze is low. Ooze, ooze is typically ooze is aren't very low. Yeah. yeah. Somehow lower than me. Yeah. And so this thing just like wobbles menacingly, and we are going to take a five minute break. And when we get back, <laughs> oh, we that can menacing deal with wobble. The wobble. Nice. <laughs>
and we're back. So you guys um, had a near death or actual death experience. <laughs> uh, actual, yep. death experience. <laughs> actual death experience. It was an actual death experience. And Stanley very begrudgingly uh, brought Jorn back from his final judgment. And now you've gone back into the cave and you found the tool that you were given and you're going to find the proper crystals, but there's like a gibbering mouther in the way. Uh, How bad can they be? Yeah. Don't, just yeah. don't get close to them. <laughs> don't. It's fine. Fine. Oh, it's God. totally fine. All right. So let me, everybody should be able to see that. Yes. Okay, that is the aura of gibbering, mm. since we don't have a grid. Um, you have this nice little metric, because never say I didn't do anything for you. Uh, so yeah, Jorm, there's a pile of ooze uh, speaking to itself, to you. Uh, no one knows. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Um There's really only one thing that Jorm is good at, and he's going to go be good at it. <sighs> he keeps his shield on because he doesn't want to go get hurt a whole bunch. But, yep, Jorm goes charging in. All right. No! saving throw. <laughs> All right. Why? Cut so, it out! Come Jorm, on. being oh. cleric, is excellent at wisdom saving throws, so he's not too terribly worried about it. Which is why he feels comfortable doing this. You're fine. There you go. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, Jordan goes charging in. And um, <clears throat> let's see. I'm going to, I am choosing to take a minus five penalty to my attack roll in order to add plus 10 to damage. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to spend channel divinity for a guided strike. So. Where is my attack? So this what's, is what's the net ten. total of that? Total plus five to attack and total plus ten to damage. Got gotcha. you. Holy shit! So I get a twenty-seven to hit and I deal yeah. twenty damage. Twenty damage. And yeah. then I spend a use of war priest. When I use the attack action, I can use a bonus action to make one weapon attack, and I can do it three times a day. So, Ooh. um, yep. Oh, that should have been. A different damage number. Hang on. So that's my second attack. This is a 12 to hit for four damage. That hits. So that deals four damage. And here's the damage I dealt the first time because I used the wrong uh, the wrong attack uh. roll. So I did 13 damage, not 20 the first time. So all told, 17 damage total. Okay. So yeah, you come, you, you charge in and you whack this thing and it makes this like gross wet slapping noise when you hit it yeah and the the babbling is like that uh yori yes i am going to use my actually i'm going to take a step back and then use my trusty bow is if I, if my token is within that circle at all or is it with like the majority of it is it considered i think if it's at all if there's any overlap that's the ruling i do. i feel like where is the space bar I must be doing something wrong. I feel like that, like, yeah, that could totally work. I could totally shoot that. All right. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. All right. For Those rolls. 12 damage. Roll 20 likes me today. It does. At least yeah. it likes somebody. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Otherwise, this would have been a very short and strange episode. Uh, and I don't, I don't need a, a really a bonus action since I'm already like safe within that zone. And you it looks like Jorm's high. No, because Jorm's in front of it with a shield. What's what is the downside to hiding? I, you're right, there isn't. <laughs> what you but I just like, I don't know. This Technically, did hide. Attacking from stealth gives you advantage. That's true. But since I already made that mistake, it's like yours doesn't do it right. Like she's just ignorant of it. True. Maybe that's that's one of her faux pas. Like, <laughs> not good at hiding. Yeah, not, like, as a, thief. a bad hider. <laughs> that's 
Uh, Lalu. Oh yeah, we're gonna stay away and uh, we're gonna cast our flaming sphere. Do 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 do. Ooh, the do, sphere. Do. The sphere of fire. Uh, feel like I should just always have a flame yep. token on the team. Yeah, there. I love casting flaming sphere. I love that it's a fireball that flies through the air and it's in my power. I wish I had one in real life. Don't we all? <laughs> yes. Would be nice. So space heaters Whoosh. are so two thousand. Uh, okay, so we've got <laughs> use it as a space heater. Oh, that's huge. That's too big. Oh yeah, yeah no. That's Just the wrong giant one. flaming sphere. That's a lot. Sorry. <laughs> Why are you like this? I don't understand. Um, I just want Yori gets engulfed while you throw it like it's this giant fireball just burns to a crisp instead it's Jorm Jorm yeah. gets engulfed I, all, all of us would actually we're like in the direct line of fire yep I think as a tiefling and a druid, flaming sphere is one of my especially favorite. Oh, totally. I'm saying to if do. it was that big fireball. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I don't disagree with you. This is a totally sidebar. So you should have I'm control of that now, Britt? Yes. All right. Oh, it's a little now. Okay. So I'm going to bring it up and around because mm -hmm. I would not like to uh, mess up Jorm, so I'm going to take it at least five feet away from Jorm, which it looks mm -hmm, like it should be mm -hmm. right over here. And uh, yeah, it's cast. And then and it's, you, it's you ram there. it in for yeah, I ram it, ram it, and pull it back to just right next to him. Okay, needs to make a deck save. Yeah. They're very bad at decks. Wow, that's bad. <laughs> it was all bad. Um, and it takes ten flame fire damage. Yes, and it sizzles and pops. And then, like a little bit of the ooze, like blackens on its backside. I'm like, Whoa. insofar as it has a backside. I'm a little surprised because I know about these things and I know that they're bad and I shouldn't get near them. But that's like all that Zisa told me about. So I'm very <laughs> curious as to like what fire will do to it. So I'm just like, whoa. Mm. <laughs> nice. Impressed with yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the Mouther is going to. Um, let's see. One bite attack. And then, yeah, it's going to try and bite Jorm. Um, yeah. first. <laughs> Jorm's fine. He's got 20 AC. It's very slow. Look at that. It's very, very slow. It, like, reaches out with one floppy mouth, and I just, like, place my shield on top of the mouth. Like, no. No. <laughs> Not today. Uh, and then it's going to... Bit. Uh, so it spits a chemical glob at a point it can see within 15 feet of it. This glob Holy explodes shit. in a blinding flash of light on impact. Each creature within five feet of the flash must succeed on a DC 13 dexterity saving throw or be blinded until the end of the mouth. There's next turn. So, drawn. That's what it did. Wow. That's did you say it's shooting fun. that at me? Yes. <laughs> All right. DC so, 13, huh? That's tough. Dexterity saving. Ha, oh, nailed ah, it. Jorm is back. <laughs> just just it. It. And it uh, it fails at life in general. And then it's going to try and get away from the fire because it's not terribly about that. Um, but it can only move 10 feet. Oh, is that moving away from me? It sure is. Oh, I strike at it with my Warhammer. I fail. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of like slides away from the fire. It's it, very it's slowly. Body probably like deforms around the space that my yeah. walk through. There's like, like a very weird slow motion melee combat going where the gibbering mother is like, I bite you, Torm's like, no. I hit you, <laughs> gibbering mother's like, eh, not, uh, not yeah. Um okay, Jorm. Oh, yeah. No, I go running after the thing. I'm going to run over here so I'm far away from that flaming thing. And then I warhammer it in the face. I hit it for nine damage. Yep. Another gross, wet splat noise. <laughs> and let's see. I didn't. That's not a crit. And that's it. Okay. Yep. Nope. That's it. All right. Uh, Yuri. 
I am going to step with I need vision. a wisdom saving throw for you. Yes, you do. As you stepped out and back in. Ooh. You're nice. fine. So smart. All right. We don't have uh, to wisdom save every turn, right? No, it's no. when you leave the aura and come back in, which you already okay, has cool. done. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I would like to, oh gosh, I guess I'm still within range. Oh, well, never mind. I'm going to use my short bow. Okay, a 16 for seventeen. And then I am going to head back and hide or, or at least disengage and step this way out of the, the Yeah, circle. you could just move and, and you want to hide? I, you know, I, I guess I've already used my wisdom check, so I'm actually going to stay in the circle and hide behind this corner so I can yeah. easily step in and out. Yeah. But I just don't want to be within that range of the spit. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, Lalu, the gibbering mouther has slowly slid around the corner. Yep, I'm going to... Uh, uh, can I see it, still see it from here? Uh... I can I can draw a straight line from myself to yeah. it without it, it hitting might, the rock. It might have partial cover. Mm -hmm. But that's fine as long as I can see where it is because I'm not throwing anything at it. I am guiding mm. my fireball at it. And I'm going to ram it with the flaming sphere. Okay. And bring it to rest right there. So let me so just give me cast that. Damage. that. Okay. Ooh, not very dexterous uh, at all. And yeah, your fire just yeah. like burns the remainder of it to a little crisp, and it's just like, like a little hardened. Does it just like melt? It melts a little bit, and then it burns, and it smells <laughs> terrible. Uh -huh. Um, and it's just like this little hardened nugget of. I, I imagine the sound of like that like a balloon makes when air is like leaking out of it oh that's terrifying <laughs> a bunch of mouths chattering like oh God. That's a horrifying <laughs> tiny little mouth screaming <laughs> <laughs> it's no. like that sound from like a fire when you have like a really wet log that's like oozing <laughs> oh no yeah <laughs> yeah snap crackle and pop it's dead. nice Got it. Good job. Yuri trots out and makes sure that she grabs these goddamn crystals and shines the <laughs> rock around it. Does it? Oh yeah, resonate? it resonates. It's like making like this singing noise. It's pretty mm -hmm. sweet. All right, she empties out one of her mini fanny packs now and fills up with the other crystals and uh, like the honing crystal. Actually, no, she holds on to the honing crystal. She doesn't want to screw anything up. She doesn't want to <laughs> deal with Stanley anymore. Mm mm. You're Very like, I don't want to deal with Stanley either. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it if you make me. <laughs> All, right, All right, let's head back. Good how job, many, team. How many did we need? And is this enough? Uh, you're able to get enough. Like, even okay. with him doubling the mm -hmm. amount, you just have to carry more back now. This um, doesn't seem like the sort of cave that might just randomly have diamonds in it, does it? Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of crystals and various things. There could be diamonds if you would want to take the time to look. I'm down. I'm gonna look. I'm yeah. curious. I'd like sure. to know. I mean, I'm like, just like know. putting random stuff in my fanny pack. I'm not really worried about money, but I'm very <laughs> interested in what all these weird rocks are. If if Jorm is now the thousand GP man, uh, I think he does sort of feel a certain responsibility for trying to, uh, you know, return the uh, material component of the spell. Mm. So if we want to spend a little time, I, I think Jorm would like to go around to like all these crystal blocks or whatever and start breaking them apart and looking for fancy gemstones. Yeah, give me an investigation check. Hmm, so uh, as, as Jorm and crew are talking about this, um, and do y'all agree that it's a good idea? I don't know. Yori is impatient and wants to like just get done with this dude. But I guess you you were dead earlier. I'll I'll let you have some fun. We might find more than one diamond, and then we can tell Mr. Stan Lee that we only found one and we can <gasps> keep the rest. We can sell it. 
We can sell the rest. I'm on board. Right. Uh, and then I, <laughs> Jorm claps his hands together, says, who's good at investigating? <laughs> Not me. Uh, no, I can I've try. A, I've got a minus one intelligence. Someone's got to be better than that. My investigation is one. Plus one? You can, you can help just... each other for a yeah. minute. So, Jorm is going to assist Lalu, but he is also going to cast a cantrip, Guidance. Mm. And right. now, Lalu, you feel the guiding hand of Tear okay. clarifying your sight as you examine the, uh, the area. Um, and you get to add a 1d4 to your check. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. We are so bad at this. <laughs> Should I still roll the 1d4? <laughs> yeah, did we get a yeah. four or a five or an eight? <laughs> There you go. So six. Six. So Jesus. you guys are like breaking up these crystals and like looking at it and like, uh, it it could be. This is a diamond. Yeah, put it in the bag. <laughs> Take out some of those crystals and put this diamond in there. <laughs> I'm just randomly grabbing rocks and putting them into the fanny pack with the other stuff that they're handing to me. This black rock is definitely a diamond. <laughs> can can I try and investigate? <laughs> I will allow you to make a separate roll as they just smash up random crystal formations. Yeah, I think Jor- Jorm and Lalu are like, yes, let's get these diamonds. Yeah, we just <laughs> grab everything. We're having a lot of fun, like smashing things and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a scene from Zoolander where we're like smashing things and then like throwing <laughs> crystal shards at each other and laughing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the cave explodes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow. Well, you are making quite a ruckus, um, and you don't hear uh, some 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 friends uh, coming down the the goblin demolition hallway, um, and you hear the you, like Yuri. You hear um, and put yourselves where you are in this room, please. I mean, I guess I might be like down here before I spring something on you. Lalu. Let's see, I'm moving now. I guess I'm just next to Jorm and we're just playing with rocks. Yeah. <laughs> so Yuri, uh, you hear you hear the gibbering voices. Not well, not the gibbering. Oh okay. the jabbering voices of goblins. Mm. Gibbering is very specific in yes. this game. Okay. Do you hear <laughs> and you hear do any of you speak orcish? Mm-mm. Uh no. Mm, no. Well, you hear a voice, uh, a slightly deeper voice in a different language, uh, muttering. Oh, goodness! Uh, why are you like this? I think we have company. She says loudly enough for her companions to hear, and she like draws her bow. Do, uh, does it. she know what direction, like what hall or pathway? Yes, as a matter of fact, you see um, from where you're kind of hidden around that that corner, mm-hmm. you see three figures uh, emerge from the same tunnel. Two goblins and a, a taller, burlier hobgoblin. Ooh. And the goblins are, are pointing at all of the dead bodies that are still scattered around, and the hobgoblin is not like, mm. Mm. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, I feel like I understood that though. Like, I like, I feel like I know what they were talking about. Uh, can she try and shoot down, like, while well, kind of like crouching down, one of the like the closer goblin, not the hobgoblin? Yes. All right. You can take a, a pot shot with sneak attack and advantage. Yes, yeah, so sixteen. You just ice one of these goblins immediately. Nice. And nice. I, I hide back behind the corner and just try and be like as quiet as possible. And they, the other, so like they're talking and trying to explain, and like an arrow just comes out of nowhere and sinks into the, one of their necks, and it falls over, and the other one is like, <laughs> <laughs> and the hop goblin draws we, draws his we, weapon and looks over his shoulder. <laughs> If we spoke Orcish, they'd actually be like, our dear friends, John and Abby, were slain by some terrible people right around this corner. Oh, look, plunk. 
Yes, it's, and they're actually having a very tragic day. Yeah. As it turns out. All right. Um, Jorm and Lalu, uh, since you're at the epicenter of the, the demo, as it were, I don't know, I don't know if you notice uh, what Yori is doing even. Didn't I she shout out? Though. Was she like, hey, there's... Oh, yeah, you did. You did. Okay, so. Yeah. It's fine. You're <laughs> fine. Um, yeah, what do you guys do? Is it initiative time? Uh, I think it might be. Because yeah. I feel like Yuri was the only one who was aware enough to like act, but Lalu and I might be a little distracted. Support goblins. They have one job. All right. So... Why why are you doing this? Hmm. That's odd. Let's do that. Sorry. Okay, well, whatever, it's fine. I can drag. It's fine. Okay. So the hobgoblin captain is definitely on the alert. <laughs> um since arrows are just raining out of apparently surrounded nowhere. by goblin bodies um and he can't i don't think he can quite see lalu and jorm no um but he definitely heard that there was some sort of smashing going on in this room and it's gotten quiet now uh so he is going to let's see let's see he's he's gonna kind of He's, he takes a couple of steps backwards. And as he backs up, he puts his hand on the back of that goblin and shoves it forward. <laughs> says, mmm. The goblin's like, mmm. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to kind of retreat a bit. Um, the goblin looks around, raises its scimitar, says, mm, 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 mm. Uh, yeah, I'm going to come up here by uh, Yori and once again cast my flaming sphere and send it towards that little goblet out front. Okay. Do, do, do. And I kept that token. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, so let me move this flaming sphere and put it on the token layer for you. Uh, so you just ram it into his face right there? Oh, yeah. Ram it right into his face. Just straight into his face and then just bring it right back in, in front of him. Just floating okay. right next to him precariously. He needs to make a dexterity save. Yep. Yep. He's very injured, but he's still alive. Oh. He's like, <laughs> And the hobgoblin captain is just looking like, huh. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. This is, this is suboptimal. Jorm. Hmm. So Hobgoblin Captain's way back there, huh? <clears throat> Can he even actually see me? Mm -mm. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess Jorm is going to... Let's see. Uh, yeah, Jorm's going to move there. And then he's going to take a second move and run as close as he can get, which is probably about there. Yeah. So he like loops around behind and below this, uh, <laughs> this pillar in order to get in the guy's face. Once he gets over there, I say, that's exactly where you died last time. Oh. I think, and I think this <laughs> goblin gets an attack of opportunity. Oh, damn. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I've got my shirt on. Did you get healed in between being dead and here? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it's it's burning. It's fine. Nada. It's fine. It's fine. Um, cool. So yeah, you come charging up, and the hobgoblin captain is definitely taken aback. Uh, Yori. Yes. Uh, gonna try and kill this goblin right here with my trusty old bow. Oh, 
Oh. Bat. Let's see. Did you? Did you? You didn't hide before. I did. I did hide before. I hid behind the the crystal right here. Okay. I made I made a active action to do so. Okay. So you do get advantage, uh, and you do hit. Ooh. Nice. Am I close enough to give her a sneak attack on that? Oh, she had advantage, so she gets sneak yeah, attack. Yeah, she, she hid. Um, so that goblin, as it's like, it's laying on its back and this like flaming sphere is getting slowly closer to its face. <laughs> and it's like very dramatic and then an arrow just like flies into its forehead. And it's like, it just goes limp on the ground. Uh, and then Yori takes that action to, I guess, move right here. Get away from the flame. Oh, you're right, you're right. I guess I'd move right here. Well, I'm just trying to get closest to the, the, the hobgoblin. Yeah, you said to be away, like at least five feet away from it. I guess I don't care if I step on some goblins. That's fine. It's fine. That's squishy. Yeah. I'm going to move you guys to the front so that you step on the bodies as is properly ordained. Um, the hobgoblin captain uh, realizes that there are way more enemies here than initially than he initially thought. Uh, but he raises his great sword and steps up to you, Jorm. I was like, all right, well, I guess we're doing this. Uh, so he gets to multi-attack. First one is a miss. Yeah, he he's, was not expecting this today at all. Awesome. He thought there was a tiger in here. <laughs> not, right. a, not some sort of cleric business happening. Um, the goblins are all dead again. Uh, Lalu. Oh yeah, let's uh, let's just bring this uh, flaming spear around the car. I can't see it. Can I? Yeah, you're gonna have to move. I'm gonna move up uh, up here. Sure, I'll just move right uh, right here and move this flaming spear right around behind him and ram him with it, and then have it stop right there. That's where it's gonna end. Okay. Pass it, boom. Hit him. Okay. For some three. What a three. What a day I'm having. I'm very tough today. What a whoa. What a He's one. like, why? Why? Is it like a does it look like a lightning bug or something to him? Is he just like, oh, get away from me? I mean, he's definitely like this is out of the ordinary, but pleasantly <laughs> warm, que questionable. I don't know. Maybe today doesn't suck as bad as he thought uh. it did. <laughs> um, and I think it's your bonus action to move it. Uh, would you like to take an action? It's my bonus action to, yeah, to ram him with it. Um, I don't, I don't think I want to use my action for anything unless, how is, Jorm, how are you doing? Do you need healing or anything? Jorm is full, I think, right, Trist? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Okay, I'm full. I think everyone's we, we reset. fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I need to do anything else, so I'm just going to wait and hold my concentration on that flaming sphere. I'm bound and determined now to ram him with it again and hit him. Okay, and I will give your flaming sphere an aura of if you're standing here. Um, you might need to move. That's a five foot aura. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Jorn. Cool. Yeah. Um, we haven't heard anything about like the town nearby being harassed by a hobgoblin captain, have we? Hmm. This guy's it's just showing up. I'm wondering if Jorm has yeah. any like uh, sort of prior knowledge of a threat here, or if it's just something dangerous to him right now uh you haven't heard any rumors of them attacking yet mm. um but it seems like they had some other business in this cave mm. right so yeah i guess i guess jorm is going to um hold his action and if he sees the hobgoblin make a threatening move then he will attack but he, right now he's going to shout out to it. He says in common, of course, in the, the, the tongue of tear and the good common tongue. He says, halt, foul creature. What do you do here? If you leave here at once and vow never to return, we shall leave you with your life. 
Okay. Um, yeah, he looks over his shoulder. Uh, think, and it looks like he wants to go back the way he came. There's just this big ball of fire, but he'll figure yeah. out how to deal with that on his turn. Yeah. Um, you want me to make like an intimidation or a persuade check or anything like uh, that? Yeah, whichever one you are leaning more on. It well, sounds like intimidation. Jorm's a pretty intimidating guy. No, he's not. <laughs> Can you like leave or something, please? As a matter of fact, he looks at you and he says, didn't one of these underlings kill you not no, too it, long it, ago? It was probably a rock troll. Shut up. Mm. <laughs> Yuri. I, uh, I'm i actually going to go up and... Oh, wait, no. I don't want to stab him. You just can't end your turn in the, the Flaming Spheres aura. Oh, then yeah, I'm going to stab him. <laughs> so you run up and you're like... Eh. Eh. Screw you! It ignores what Jorm's trying to do and help him out. And just, eh. Yeah, he his great sword swings down and he parries your blow. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, oh, I guess I, no, I step back. You can use your bonus action to disengage. Yeah, I disengage. Okay. Um, Hobgoblin captain, uh, seeing a dead man walking and a tiny halfling trying to uh, Does he need to take damage at the beginning of his turn? If he ends his turn. Oh, it ends his turn, right. Sorry. Um, So he is going to, he's going to, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, he's going to step out this way, put his back against the wall, and swing his great sword two more times at Jorm. <gasps> Jorm interrupts by attacking with his warhammer via his ready to action. Mm. Yep. Go ahead. Warhammer. I hit him. I deal five Ooh. damage. Yes. So it clangs against his chest and he like coughs a couple of times and then brings up its great, great sword roaring at you. Uh, misses and no. misses. Nothing. He shouts in frustration. Also wonders to himself how goblins manage to like, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they were probably exaggerating. They tend to do that. I'm Lalu. protected by the power oh, yeah. of tear. Flaming Spear, ramming him and stopping it over here on the other side. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Ah! What a three. What a three. But he does take the full three. Nice. <laughs> My spear's so little. Um, would you like to use your action action? Um. How does he look? Is he looking? Is he looking bad? He looks fine. He's looking weak. He looks fine. He's totally fine. Ah, uh, um, no, because, well, maybe I should just run up and scimitar him. But I feel like he will attack me if I do. That. <laughs> mm, the choice is yours. No. Nah, well, if I don't, Jorm could die. All right, I'm just gonna run up and. Uh, if I attack him, I can step away. Yeah. Uh, well, I no. guess the fire doesn't affect me, so it doesn't matter. So yeah, hmm. I'm gonna attack him with my scimitar. I'm not sure about that. It does well, say any creature. Yeah, but I have fire resistance. It'll do like quarter damage to you if you save. Oh. Oh well, I already did it. <laughs> okay. So you do hit him for six. Nice. Um, and you end your turn there. So roll your flaming sphere damage. Okay. I swear. That that big old ten. So, now suddenly I get it's a like ten. super effective. Um Damn <laughs> you it. give me a deck save. Fuck. This is this is ridiculous. This is oh. Nope. Oh. No. Uh, but you do still take half damage because you have fire resistance. So That's five. Fine. Yeah. That's suddenly fine. you're like, oh, I guess my sphere isn't that effective. I'll just run up and hit him. Yeah. And then it like, suddenly oh, turns it's on. <laughs> I'm like, I run up. It's like, whoosh. I'm like, oh, my eyebrows are gone. <laughs> All right. I guess that's my turn. <laughs> Jorm. Yeah. Jorm grits his teeth. 
and um, he, he mutters under his breath, we fought your kind in the chasm, and then he strikes out. <laughs> uh, you miss. 11 probably doesn't hit, right? Okay. Uh, so Jorm expends the use of his war priest okay. in order to make a second attack. And he has channeled divinity to give himself the plus 10 uh, attack bonus, and he's using the minus 5 penalty to plus 10 damage. So Total of plus five to hit and plus ten to damage. Aww. Oh, so I got yeah. a twenty-three, which turns into a twenty-eight, uh, yeah. and I deal six damage, which turns into sixteen damage. Yeah, he's looking real bad now. That that was a doozy for him. Uh, Yori. Yori does like a somersault, and then uh, to block this way, just in case he tries to run. I feel like we got him pretty much covered now. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the sword didn't really work, so she's going to go back to her bow. Okay. Oh. No. 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 Yeah, it whizzes over his shoulder and past where Lalu is fighting her own flaming sphere. <laughs> and clatters, clangs against the wall and hits the floor. And um, uh, I just stay there. I don't hide or anything. Okay. The goblin, the hobgoblin captain... Hmm. Does my flaming sphere go out when I get take damage, or does my concentration continue? Ah, uh, you need to make a concentration check. Okay. Which I believe is Constitution. And I, I think it's DC ten. Oh, oh you, yeah. I'm good. Save. It's fine. <laughs> it's a, you. You got a twenty-one. It's I fine. got it. Um. So this hobgoblin looks at the things surrounding him. Um, hmm, let's roll, let's roll on a one, it'll hit Jorm, and a two, it'll hit Lalu. Nope, that's a D1. Roll D2, please. Yes. Lalu. No! No! So, swings once and hits you for 13. What, what the shit? A wow. garbage monster. That was, was that the one against me? No, that was against Lalu. Oh, damn. So he turns and sees this like tiefling fighting its own flaming sphere and is like, well, let's add before boss and swing, mm-hmm. swings at Lalu. <laughs> uh, takes a second attack at Lalu and hits Holy again. Shit. No! Yeah, so you're fine. It's fine. Whatever. It's fine. Are you unconscious, what did it hit Lalu? Me for? It hit me for 11? Yeah, so a total of 23 damage. Oh, yeah, I'm super unconscious. I was like, ha! I, I just had- fall down and my flame sphere goes out. I shouldn't have gotten close. <laughs> it was a bold choice. Oh. Um, yeah, so uh Lalu death saving throw, please. Uh, did I have to? it's fine. It's fine. Okay, hold on. One moment, please. Hold please. Okay. There we go. It's okay. We'll just go back to Wizard Stanley. <laughs> hey. Remember about that great. diamond? <laughs> we're we're going to bring him a, a clear rock and be like, this is a diamond, right? And that's a fail. Yeah. Um, God in heaven. Jorm. Jorm <laughs> shouts, Lalu! And he slaps a hand on her shoulder and he spends a second level spell <gasps> to cure wounds. Blom. Oh my God. Well, you get to what the back. shit? <laughs> Wait, this isn't, uh, oh no, okay, so it's both of them. So it's uh, yeah. seven seven hit points of healing, mm-hmm. which is okay. still trash, but at least it's not five. Okay, so, so I get seven back. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank God, because I had minus five. And then, hang on. <laughs> well, you can only get to zero. Yeah. Oh, that's seven. true. That's right. a good point. I can't cast Shield of Faith. Okay. Okay, that's it for Jorm. All right, uh, Yori? She gonna stab. <laughs> she don't stab him. She, uh, she gonna miss. And she dis- uh, disengages, steps back. Hobgoblins okay. are brutal. Oh! Yeah, man, she was having some good rolls all throughout the day, and this hobgoblin comes up and just ruins everything. Yep. The hobgoblin is starting to feel the tides of fate turn in his favor, uh, and he's going to attack Jorm this time. Uh, That's fine. 17? Jorm is comfortable with this. 
17 hit or miss? Hell no. I got a 20 right now. Yeah, it just clangs against your armor. Yeah. This is what Jorm is for. I'm trying to heal my friend. Could you not right now? (laughs) Uh, Lalu, you just got brought back from the brink of death. So now I'm at zero hit points. You're at seven. Uh, No, no, no. I'm at seven. Oh, I see what you're saying. Fantastic. Let's hit him. Uh, Let's hit him with the scimitar. You could also heal yourself. I already rolled. (laughs) I missed. I should have healed myself, but I don't think I can do that as a bonus action. So nope. I'm just going to sit here like an idiot. All right. I'll <laughs> heal you next time. And then if okay. I get hurt, <laughs> you can heal me. I'm making a lot of poor choices today. So Lalu like wakes up and just swings the scimitar I'm just around. Angry. Yeah. I'm like, oh, ah! <laughs> He's like, ew, gross. Uh, Jorm. Jorm looks at Lalu and sighs and he lays his hand on her shoulder for his last spell of the day. Come on, Dice, don't do this to me. You get another five hit points back. Nice. Jorm is officially out of spells. Uh, Yori, there's, it's a hot mess. What do you do? Uh, I'm gonna step back into this hot mess. And I'm gonna I'm gonna poke right into it with my uh, little short sword right here. There we go. Look at that. Look at that beauty. It's still a miss. <laughs> no, it's a he beauty. looks over his shoulder uh, and is like, hiding. "Could you?" Well, I'm, no, I disengage. I'm, I'm fighting here. Could you go away? Yuri, do you have two weapons, like a short sword and dagger? I do have a dagger. You can make an offhand dagger attack as a bonus action. You can instead of disengaging. Okay. Yeah then yeah, let's do that. Oh, check that shit there out. Not go. only did you crit, but you also still get to use your sneak attack. So killer. Yeah, yeah, you you do literally, like you run up and you're like, ah, and he's like, what are you doing? Please go away. And you bring up your dagger and like sink it into his gut. Ew. And he's like, ugh, ugh, and he dies. Yeah! Oh. We did it! We did it! <laughs> it took a while. And by we, I mean you guys. Oh. So you're you're in the cave. Um, you have the crystals Stanley wants. Also some miscellaneous other crystals of dubious value. And rocks. Rocks. Mm-hmm. Uh. Does, uh, does he have anything on his, like, what about his weapon? He seemed to be... Of higher caliber. He did have a great sword. Is he wearing plate mail? Uh, he is wearing half plate. Half plate. Nah, it's not worth the carry weight. Um, I, I start rifling through the pouches that any of these goblins and hobgoblin are carrying. Uh, they have like some rations and... A bat wing and... Yeah, <laughs> like like weird goblin shit that they find very important. A ball of string tied around an eyeball. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, rat tails. Standard goblin fare. Yeah. <laughs> Just pull out my pockets. What's this? I have five random goblin shits. Okay, good. Yeah. Just trash loot. And Let's get the nine hells out of here. Yeah. As we we're walking out, I kind of realized that Jorm has actually now been resurrected, so I'm kind of like, wait. Is he still Jorm? And I start thinking is he about still it. Because Jorm? <laughs> like, is he is he okay or is he like weird because he's been resurrected? Like, is anything weird or different about him? Not yet. No, he's fine. Okay. I'm just Plain old lovable Jorm. I'm just kind of watching him walk in front of me and I'm like trying to get a read on like whether some weird undead stuff is going on with him or not. And I don't notice anything, but I think to myself, I'm going to keep an eye on this. Mm. So so you guys return, I assume, to the Wizard Stanley. Mm -hmm. Well, are there any other towns nearby that would buy these crystals from us? Maybe. You could just dip. 
nah, man, you just die. Lalu almost died. Let's do the right thing. Let's just get out of here. Let's let's start anew. Yeah, let's, I feel like Jorm would not actually be chill with absconding without paying for the resurrection, at least. So, yeah. He knows he's got some good deeds to stack up. Mm-hmm. So you return to Stanley's uh, fixer-upper townhome. Yeah. He, he looks at you and he says, well, well, do you have it? Finally. Yeah, we got it. We got it. We've got it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Give them, give them to me. Yes, Who yes. has them? I do. Oh, good. And I, I, you don't, you don't get the fanny pack, okay? And I had the honing crystal separated as well, Mister Stan Lee, if that is your real name. I don't and- want your goblin diapers. Just give me my crystals. <laughs> diapers. <laughs> diapers. <laughs> she, goblin diapers. Yori sniffs Ew. them. See what it smells like. Does it smell bad? It smells like goblin. It smells terrible. Oh, she throws it. <laughs> <laughs> she takes all of them off of her. <laughs> so, are we good? Yes, yes, yes. These will do nicely for my great spell. Please leave. Never Can- darken my door again. Happily. And we would like it if you didn't make any more cameos in our lives either, Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Can As what, if. Once, but one thing, you know, we don't really, we don't really have anywhere to go. Do you have any, like, can you point us in the right direction of money, mostly? Like, a wealthy town? <laughs> maybe some nobles we can... Re- you, you want, what, a letter of recommendation? Well, that would be very nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> I can tell them how incompetent you are. Oh, wait. You're, you're a wizard of adventure. You know, you've been places. You've heard of things. Indeed, I've been far and wide. Yes, We yes. saved you from that cave. Tell us where the town is. I saved your friend from literal death. I think we are even on that score. Well, Thank he you. only died because we were getting you something that you wanted. So the not even... And tell us where the town is. Or we're going to stay here and keep throwing uh-huh, goblin diapers is... inside your house. That would I be... have more in my fanny pack. Would you like some tea? Tell us where the town <laughs> is. Just come, come right this way. We can sit down and be civilized about this. No need to fling poop at my house. <sighs> I understand that the boundaries of social behavior are unfamiliar to you, whatever you are. But if you could come and have a seat at my table, I will tell you what I know about towns that may be looking for mildly competent adventurers like yourselves. As he says this, I have like one hand inside of my fanny pack ready to like bring out another diaper. And then I'm like, "Mm, all right. I whisper to Lalu, um, soldiers, he means soldiers. Whatever you are, soldier. I like, kind of don't believe him, but decide that it's not important enough not to find out where the town is. And I hate this guy so much that I just want to get it over with. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. So he like invites you into his home once again and then fixes you cups of tea. They're tolerable. Um, and takes a sip and he says, now, in terms of places that may be uh, experiencing some uh, travails that you could assist with and earn some money thereby, uh, there are, of course, several throughout the land. Uh, I have heard tales of mm, some vampire nonsense, and mm, I believe there are giants in another part of the world. I don't That's like giants. A- I don't like, mm. no. Definitely it's, not a fan of vampires either. Not really. It's, it's also quite cold in the, the the giant area. I thought about going there myself, but my bones are old. I like to be warm, but I can't tell you of this place that is quite warm. Uh, uh, yes, um, it's called <clears throat> Chult. Uh, it's a, a beautiful jungle paradise. Um, there are uh, merchant princes. They're fabulously wealthy and often looking for people to help them with various tasks. You could go there and try your luck. Was that so hard, Stanley? Thank you. It's been very harrowing. Yes, in fact. Why do they call it Chomp? 
choked. Oh, but oh. that does that does <laughs> remind me. Uh, be careful of the dinosaurs. There's dinosaurs there. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. It's warm and there's a jungle and there's dinosaurs. We gotta you go. You don't actually mean dinosaurs, dinosaurs, right? You oh, mean big lizards. Oh, indeed, I do. I have several ch- pages in my zoology about dinosaurs that I encountered in that place. Can you can you show me a picture? Oh, yes, of course, of course. I have one moment. Let me get to my book. Yes, yes, he flips through some pages and he says this. Oh, right. you mean ferocious lizards, of course. I didn't understand your fancy wizardly mumbo jumbo. Well, the proper term, my good man, is dinosaurs. There are also yuan ti, which are not to be confused with dinosaurs. There are also lizard folk, which are not to be confused with either of the other two. It's a very delicate situation. Sounds, um, well, it's not vampires and it's not giants. Animals are cool. Animals are cool. <laughs> okay, well, is there, is there a lot of money? You always say that you say that there's a lot of princes there. That Fabulously seems like competition. Well, you just have to be better than everyone else. I am better. Easy. That seems obvious. All right. I don't know why you even asked the question. What kind Stanley. of adventurer is worried about competition, I ask. Most unbecoming. Hmm. That's the smartest we'd thing better, you've said. Let's, I suppose yes. we'd better go to the local tavern and see if we can collect our, uh, our fighter. Hmm. Right. Yes, yes. You'll want, you'll want that. What is, Angus? Uh, close Angus? Yeah, whatever. The the portly one. You'll want him. His name's Langus, I say as I drop the rest of the goblin diapers out of my fanny packs. <laughs> I don't want them in there anymore. And then I get up and just walk out of the house. Okay, so so the three of you go to collect Langus from the local tavern and sally forth to Chult in pursuit of riches and adventure. In this mm-hmm. mysterious jungle land. Hmm. When we return in our next episode, we will flash back to the present time wherein you are encountering uh, someone dead. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Sounds good. I like undead. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, you're a cleric. Like, whatever. Yeah. It's fine. It's kind of my jam. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this has been a little flashback interlude. <laughs> um into whatever happened to stanley uh what death curse question mark hmm we'll answer all of these questions in our following episodes Yay! and probably get langus back from the tavern we'll see all right I believe it is now the time to do outros okay thank you <laughs> thank you tear mighty tear um <laughs> Who knows the the run of show? Uh, my name is Nadra Tikor, uh, aka Trista Ray. I'm the DM for this, um, and that's kind of all I'm doing on Twitch right now, besides working for the company behind the scenes. So follow me on Twitter. I tweet. Oh, also, if you're not reading it, seventeen seven seventy six. Read that. It's amazing. Juice is the best character. If you think otherwise, fight me. Right. Hey, it's me, Bert Wiseman, in real life and on Twitter. And I'm Cher Hex on Twitch and Instagram. And uh, sometimes I stream. So if you like watching streams of random games with lots of talking over it, you can follow me. And I'm looking forward to next week. So thanks for watching and I hope you all have a lovely weekend. And once again, thank you to Eric for being our production manager. And uh, thank you to all of our artists for putting together the overlays and the token art, Jess, Rob, and uh, Efahan and uh, Anon. I think I'm saying that correctly. Sorry if I'm not, um, for giving us our intro music and art. Um, Also drummer boy. And drummer boy for our, yes, for our break music. Um, And that's it for me. And I'll see you next week. And Steven, you go. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. 
Jorm is very excited to see what happens next week. So, yeah, shout outs to everybody in chat. Thanks for hanging out and having a great time with us. It's always super fun. Uh, thank you, Nadja, for preparing this awesome uh, prequel flashback episode for us. And um, I'm going to toss it over to Kelly. Thank you. Well, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. It was really fun to go back because to see Stanley again, I actually really enjoyed Stanley from our first encounter with him in the stream of Annihilation. So that was a nice interlude. However, if I never see him again, I'm okay with that. But <laughs> I'm really excited to get into some undead baddies, which uh, we'll be doing very soon. So uh, if you want to follow me anywhere, Hello Kelly link is my Twitter and my Twitch. So yeah, check me out there. And Naja. Yeah, so we will return um, to the present of the narrative and to twitch.tv slash D&D with more Misfits Risen in our next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.